So I'm here with Ingmar, he is a professor at Oxford. Very nice to meet you. Nice and to meet you, Alex. Uh, you are the man who took this car effectively and turned it into an autonomous vehicle, am I right? Right, so uh, Shell came to us about 18 months ago and uh, said we would like to look at the future of mobility, just like we have done with the Shell Eco Marathon for 30 years. What's next? And we said autonomy is the thing that's next. Um, in many shapes and guises, uh, not just in autonomous cars, but also in, in various other walk, walks of life, logistics, um, you know, space exploration is an obvious one. Uh, and so we said, absolutely, give us one of your uh, media vehicles, the same one you see over there, um, and we'll see what we can do. And, and so we and put an autonomy system on it. Yeah, and this is literally the first time that the car has gone round on track, am I right? Absolutely, so about half an hour ago, it's the first time it actually went on track. And. Uh, it didn't crash. Uh, it's, I no, mean, we're still no, straight as far as I'm so under, congratulations I can just check that. with the guys. It, did, it didn't amazing. crash, did no it? Crashes. No, it didn't crash. No, no, no. we're fine. Okay, it's all well, good. that's good. It's so, all um, good. So you said it took 18 months to make? It took about 18 months to build. The, the hard bit is taking a vehicle and actually retrofitting it, making it drivable by a computer. Um, all the software that actually drives it was written in parallel, so that's that's where a lot of, a lot of work went. And I guess the question is now, uh, what next? What next for the, for the world of uh, autonomous driving? Oh, many, many things. So um, on one hand, we can think about you know, how autonomous cars might make us safer, how they might make us more fuel efficient, what is, this is about. Uh, on the other hand, it's also about teaching engineers of the future to actually deal with the challenges of autonomous technology. Uh, and that very much is what the Eco-Marathon has always been about, right? Kind of shaping future engineers against the challenges of the future. So if Shell were to, uh, were to announce an autonomy track, that would be awesome because yeah. we would be able to get engineering uh, generations of the future to engage with this in a sort of safe and controlled environment. That would be a huge win. Yeah, that would be very cool. Um, and in terms of the autonomous cars, mm -hmm. could you just put a dog inside the car and then let dogs effectively race? It would be amazing. <laughs> okay. I mean, this so, is my idea, okay? So if you use it, right. it's on camera as well, it's on YouTube. Okay. You need to give me credit for this. Well, we, My the, genius is pretty much as high as yours the, here. When the time comes, we will absolutely be You will use dogs. Uh, 30 years from now, potentially, maybe, maybe we should probably talk about that before then. I think, yeah, just call me up or so, and we'll then do. we can discuss it. Alex, we'll do Alex, that. yes. We'll do that. Um, and, um, but it's a journey, right? So it's very much a journey of discovery in yeah. terms of what the, uh, what the failure modes of the tech are, and it's very much what a lot of the projects around the country are also, around, uh, yeah. also for. So, very quickly, mm -hmm. Well, I say very quickly, but this is so complicated that my tiny mind can't, can't understand it. How is your autonomous system different to, say, a Tesla? Because I've driven a Tesla on the motorway, and I know it's got lots of sensors and radars. Does this work in the same sort of way? Um, broadly speaking, in the sense that it, it uses onboard sensing to, to um, glean glimpses of the world, yes. Ultimately, it's what's under the hood that's different. It's a bit like buying a different brand of car, right? Ultimately, they're all cars, but they all sort of work slightly differently and work in a different way. The special bit about this is that this is not actually bespoke to a racetrack. The, the system that runs this um, is meant to embed itself into a workspace. So if it goes around the track, it will learn about the world, yep. the track in this case. Just like we might put it into a warehouse, it will learn about, about the warehouse. And very quickly, it will embed itself. It will kind of um, experience that sort of workspace and be able to operate in that sort of environment. That's how it's different. Very cool. So if I were to drive up to Oxford, I don't know, in my Mazda MX-5 Mark One with a turbo, pretty good and Lovely. say dude hook me up some autonomy here mm -hmm. could you do it uh, that depends entirely in what sort of context could we do it um, we should probably talk about that yeah and then I'd buy a dog and then you know I could say dog go to Waitrose Go get me some ice lollies for Kimi Raikkonen. I think, your, I think your car will be very, very, very old and outdated by the time we'll be able to put dogs into vehicles. I think I too will be very old and outdated. That may be true. And on that note, I'm going to call With it... With no safety driver. With no safety driver. But thank you very much for your time. Alex, And um, so. I'm still going to drive my MX-5 to you and we're going to talk about the dogs thing. We should do that. Dogs thing. Talk. Yeah. Let's so, do that. Cool. All thank right. you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.